so you've made it to uh, the summit of the climb. What we're going to try and do now is just give a little bit of insight into making it right the way back down the mountain and enjoying it as much as you can. So this is a little bit on descending techniques. You can see here just the position on the bike, nicely on the drops, relaxed upper body, just letting the momentum take you through the bend. Outside leg, pushing down, keeping uh, everything nice and tight. Inside leg up so you're not going to clip a pedal on the, uh, the apex of the corner. Also a nice technique is to actually apply a little bit of body weight, sort of push on the outside with your outside leg. That really helps you uh, sort of stay tight to the corner and it means if you do need to tighten up the line you can just pull down with the, uh, the left hand arm in this instance and just keep nice and tight on that apex. So what we've got here is uh, a right hand hairpin um, and as you can see as I enter the bend I'm getting close I'm trying to actually break before the bend and then use the bend to roll through with as much momentum as possible so I start off on the left hand side of the road swinging out and then really cutting across the apex using the bend as much as possible. It's quite a difficult technique uh, and I don't always do it because if you're in a bunch it can get a bit nervous. Make sure that you do uh, understand from the organisers if you are on closed roads though because if you're shooting down a mountain descent at uh, you know 80 or 90 kilometres an hour then uh, if there is traffic coming the other way it could be the end of your race, it could be the end of more than your race so uh, watch out for cars. Uh, on the recce, you know, you can see uh, we, we certainly didn't have closed roads, so we were we were taking a few risks at times. But uh, yeah, just keep an eye out for cars and, and oncoming uh, motorists at all times. And we've got a nice flowing right-hand bend here. So on the entry, you can see I'm on the the left-hand side of the uh, bend. I would have taken most of my speed off before that point, uh, and then taken the brakes off, so I'm rolling through this section. From there you can see how I'm just sort of cutting straight across the apex to, uh, to the midpoint of the descent. So hands are actually on the, uh, the brakes still just in case you're going to need them in emergencies. But trying to stay relaxed and trying to roll through the corner. And then you can see straight afterwards uh, on the exit moving out to the other side of the road. And then try and gain the momentum again. You see on this same uh, right hander uh, a different line perhaps not the most efficient line through this bend so I've started off on the right hand side so I've had to scrub a lot more speed uh, and then I've still wanted to take the apex tight obviously if there's traffic or uh, things coming the other way but I would have lost more momentum coming into the bend and then as I exit the bend I'm slightly in the wrong position I'm actually running wider now which is going to be put me closer to the barrier and again it's going to make it harder to get momentum up and uh, gain speed for the next corner. On any section of the road, pay a lot of attention on inner or outer lines where generally the traffic aren't going to go. There could be gravel, the road could be a worse surface. It's a big consideration because if you come into a bend a little bit too fast or you run wide, as soon as you hit a gravel patch you could easily, quite easily be in the, uh, the barrier before you know it. I've got the same thing coming into a left hand bend so you can see I've moved over onto the right hand side of the road. I'm going to sweep through trying to cut the apex nice and tight and then on the exit move straight out onto the right hand side of the, uh, the road again. Try and keep as much momentum as possible to start getting that speed up again. If you aren't on closed roads then you're going to have to adjust the, uh, the line. It's not necessarily going to be the racing line. So here I can't see all the way around the bend so I can't check if there's traffic coming the other way. I've stayed slightly further on the right hand side of the road, still keeping it tight onto the apex but just staying all the way over on the right so that if there, if there does happen to be traffic coming the way that Barlow World kit's not going to be spread all over the road for the wrong reason. I've got the same thing here on another right hander so I'm all the way on the right hand side, it's a real tight bend this taken a lot of my speed down before I hit the corner. If we were on closed roads you could sweep straight out from the left hand side straight across the bend and keep a lot more momentum but on this occasion you've got to ride to the conditions of the road so I'm right on the right hand side taking a lot of speed down just getting around the corner hitting the apex and then straight on the exit for the next bend. Now descending any mountain um, is always exhilarating it's always a real buzz especially when you've got a series of hairpins and you piece them all together you can feel that you're hitting a good line, you're keeping good momentum. One thing to consider though is if the weather does change that you're going to have to really slow that riding down. Don't be put off by uh, riding slower when it is wet. 
because the roads can turn really, really slippery. And as you can see here, you know, I'm sort of gingerly making my way around the corners now, trying to keep my, my weight more uh, upright so I'm not leaning as much into the bends. And also, you know, consideration is sort of diesel and things on the road when it does rain in the mountains, they, they just become notoriously uh, like ice rinks. So I think the aim really here for me is, is just, it just turns into making it down the mountain uh, as safely as possible uh, in one piece with the bike in one piece, the rider in one piece. And if you do have one, one point of consideration, if you do have roads with uh, the white lines, then, then try and avoid them at all costs because they just get ridiculously slippery. Now when you uh, are on a descent, uh, it's not so bad on a climb like this, but uh, definitely a couple of times in some of the sportives, you hit a, a mountain descent and you've got a tunnel. If it's a nice day, you're going to have your glasses on. And when you hit that tunnel, make sure that you either move your glasses forward so that you're, you're just looking past your lenses, because as soon as you hit the tunnel, your pupils have still got to change. And I've been caught out a few times where I've gone into a tunnel, it's been dark, I've got my glasses on, I then shift them forward, the pupils have got to change, so you, you end up just riding into this you know, black hole and not seeing anything, and it can be really, really dangerous. So if you do know that there's tunnels on the circuit, or if you can see as, as you approach a tunnel, just shift your glasses forward, look past your lenses so that you, your pupils adjust before you hit the tunnel and uh, yeah hopefully it's going to stand you in good stead for when you hit the middle of the tunnel and you can still actually see where you're going. Part of any sportive or grand fondo event will uh, will encompass a lot of riding in groups so despite the fact that there may be uh, times when you want to take a particular line whether it's the fastest line the racing line round a, a bend always consider the riders around you. I've seen uh, on numerous times when when a rider almost is riding as if they're on their own or on the road and before you know it they've sort of cut from from the left to the right or uh, right to left uh, and they've taken 20 or 30 riders out straight away without even realizing so pay a lot of attention if you are riding in a group and as I say if you are uh, not on the perfect line whatever line you, you're on a descent just stick with it the main thing is to actually just make it to the bottom in one piece uh, and enjoy as much as you can in doing so couple of, uh, sort of general riding techniques you can see a uh, nice high cadence and that really sort of preserves the legs if you go out there and you're doing 200 kilometers and you're grinding away in a big gear it soon wears you down so try and keep a nice high cadence nice and relaxed on the bike uh, arms are slightly bent to, to just mop up any road vibrations or if you do hit uh, any potholes you're you're ready to react to them so really you know just try and stay really nice and light on the bike and relaxed at all times and i think that's going to be a, a nice technique to get through the longer sporties <laughs>